Hey guys, welcome to a video with me, Claris. In this video, we are going to be doing something for the holiday season, something Christmassy, something bright, something fun, but also something easy for you guys just starting out. Um, my supplies, really quickly, I am using my 8x8 inch pad of watercolor paper by Zen Art Supplies, 100% cotton, and I'm using my number four Princeton round velvet touch brush and I've got four colors from my Dalarani set of 48 um, watercolors and I am also keeping handy some metallics by KMS. All right, uh, I've got water handy and we are ready to begin. So uh, we're going to do mistletoe or yes, we're going to do mistletoe. I was going to say holly, but holly is slightly different. Um, so we're going to do something very much like holly uh, and we're going to do, um, we're going to paint them in, we're going to paint the leaves in two different types of greens, actually maybe even throwing in a third. Where is my third? There is supposed to be a, um, so we've got, we've got hookers green light and then we've got sap green here and then the third for the third we are going to be doing a wait for it viridian hue okay so just to swatch them really quickly and show you guys what that looks like actually I've already swatched it on here so we've got the hooker's green light which is right there viridian hue which is right there and then sap green, which is over here. Okay, uh, and in fact, I might just add a little bit of sepia to the viridian hue. Let's just see, or maybe let's just keep it bright. Let's keep it bright and merry uh, to commemorate the holiday season. Okay, so we're gonna start off with using the hooker's green light. And I'm mixing it right from the color cake. Let's just add it onto my palette over here. And so these are pretty much using the tip of your brush, lightly grazing to create the stem and then using the tip to sort of drag and press down and then trail off to do the leaves okay so let's just start off with a leaf kind of growing or sorry a stem going diagonally across the sheet and so I'm just gonna do a light graze and do this very lightly to get that nice thin line and then I'm going to get more of the color mix it on here and then while we have it mixed this is where the beauty um, of watercolor or just having different colors comes in just get some of the viridian mix that onto the side so now you can sort of dip on the go and you have your colors ready for you. So I've got this color here handy. And what I'm gonna do is do my first leaf. So I'm not focusing too much on the shape of these, I'm just gonna keep them very simple, pressing down, trailing towards the stem. You can make your edges rounded if you want to, and then push all the color downward. So there we've got our first leaf and let's do the second one. This one I'm getting more of the darker viridian that we have and I'm going to do the same thing but on the other side. So again watch me using the tip pressing down trailing towards the, the stem that we've created and then I'm going back up and rounding the edge or the corner 
pushing all the color downward. Now at this point, if you want to add a darker hue to kind of give more dark and lights to your work, just get some color directly from your color cake and you're dabbing in the area where you want it to be darker. So I'm doing it more towards the bottom and a little bit to the edge, leaving the center more like a nice gradient. So that's what the dabbing is going to help with. Okay, so we've done two. Uh, I'm going to do one more in the same tone. Actually, let's get some of that first color that we, we mixed, which is very similar. And let's just do this one over here. So again, pressing down, trailing off towards my stem, rounding the very top, and then pulling this downward, giving it that nice organic shape Okay, and now again, swiping off all that color, adding it right to the bottom here so that it goes right to the bottom. And then a little bit at the top before it dries off. So we've got nice lights and darks. I'm gonna add more of those dabs over here too. Perfect, so now we've got three. Let's do a, let's do one more. So what I've done is lightly taken off the color from my brush. I'm going to go ahead here and create another smaller looking leaf. And I'm just drawing the color from this leaf that we've done here and creating the shape. So it's very light. Now at this point, that's perfect. So what I want to do is get a little bit of that sap green and just add that to this leaf. And now that I have the sap green happening, I'm just going to go ahead and do another leaf, possibly over here. So you can see now we're introducing a different color of leaves. Leaves. Same idea, pushing the color all the way down. Perfect your shape however you want it to be. I'm going to get a little bit more and do a dab at the top and at the bottom. Okay, and just perfecting that. Okay, here's another one. I know these smaller ones are looking to be fatter and bigger, but that's okay. Our focus over here for this is to really get accustomed to mixing the colors and getting those nice blends happening, as you can see with, with this here. Okay, so now washing off most of, we've got one, two, three, four, six. I'll do one more in over here. And in fact, getting some of this color, a mixture of both, I'm going to do this leaf kind of facing inward a little bit. These are very relaxing to do, very re like repetitive. So you're getting more practice. You're also kind of really getting accustomed to not just the brush, the color and everything else, which is very helpful if you're just starting out. Taking more of that dark color and adding it to the top and then just dabbing it at the bottom as well. So now we've got all that. That's perfect. You can kind of do start a new one if you want to or continue on to this because now I want to introduce the sparkling stars which is this nice beautiful metallic shade not shade watercolor so using my number four getting some of this I'm going to create what looks to be a leaf 
and I'm painting it right over here on top of this leaf and it's touching the sap green leaf that we painted. Okay, so there's one and I'm gonna do my next one around over here. And I'm what I'm trying to achieve here is same thing that we did with the other leaves. I'm trying to get it to touch what we've already laid down and I want to see and I want you guys to experience the metallic colors blending in with the regular. And for that, obviously, if you are using 100% cotton paper, you will get the dampness. The dampness will still be in effect, and so you'll get that nice blend happening in between, which is lovely. So here's another one. I don't really like the shape too much, so I'm just going to do that. Um, so we now have one, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got nine, which is a good and decent number. And now we can go on to doing the berries. So I zoomed in a little bit so you can see a tad bit better. So for the berries, I'm using a combination of the vermilion hue and um, what is this? Alizaran crimson. So we'll start off with doing the Alizaran. And I'm going to just activate that, mix a little bit of that onto my palette, muted version. And once I have that, we're going in and we're going to do, uh, let's do one here because we don't have a lot of space. And I want to be able to really show you guys how you can just kind of add your shape. And we're doing the same, it's the same concept in terms of having a nice shape of color and then being able to move the color around. So we've got one here. What I'm going to do is wash off my brush, right? Lightly dab it so there's not a lot of water on it. And I'm going to go ahead and create another shape right beside it. And you see how that color just immediately goes right into that second berry. That is what we're looking for. Beautiful, right? So now I'm going to do this. I'm going to add a third one and I'm going to use the vermilion hue. So I've lightly gotten some color on here and I'm going to create a third little berry here. And this one is touching both the top light one and also the vermilion, sorry, the alizarin. So we're getting a blend of both. Let me just move this out here so you can see better. So there we go. You can actually see how pretty that blend is. Um, so anyway, so once we have that, if we really want to intensify the darkness, just get a little bit more of the alizarin. And we're going to add that in here. If you want to add a little bit of that a touch of that happening into this berry. Just throw that in there and it'll immediately seep in. I'm going to add some over here at the bottom of the orange one here because I don't want it to be completely orange, but I want that nice hint of orange. So we've got that two-tone effect happening and that is perfect. I love it. So this is the idea. This is what we are looking to achieve and create. Um, so at this point, I'm going to do one more here, or maybe two more here. And then after that, I would encourage you guys to sort of take what you have learned through this short exercise and create a bunch of different versions of these, maybe just flowing around on the page. And let's see what you come up with. Encourage yourself to really explore your own compositions once you've learned the technique, this is also a great way to really practice and get um, get a good feel for not just the technique, but also composition. Oh, this, this became too big, but that's okay. 
So I've taken a little bit of that second color and I'm just adding that in here and you can see the orange blending into this crimson which is just gorgeous. So now this third one that I'm going to do is going to be just plain water on my brush and going in and you can see as soon as I touch the edge of these berries that color just flares out which is stunning so that's that you can either leave it that way or like we went ahead and added more dabs of the brighter hue we can touch that up so then it looks darker on the one side same thing here I'm going to do the same thing here I'm going to touch these guys up a little bit as well. Oh, that's perfect. I'm going to leave this the way it is and end this video here. I hope you guys have found these techniques helpful. I hope this is going to really bump up the scale in terms of what you're going to be doing for your holiday creations. It's simple and fun to do and yeah, great exercise if you're just starting out. I'm going to continue creating another pattern, but I would love to see what you guys come up with. So please tag me on social media and uh, show me what patterns you've come up with or what you have created from this video. Uh, thanks guys so much for watching. Hit that like button if you like this video and please consider subscribing as well as it really helps my channel grow. And uh, see you guys online. Everything I have used in here, by the way, is listed in the description below. So feel free to check the supplies there. Thanks, guys. Bye.